I've never, all my life I've heard that it's impossible to square the circle. I've never had the vaguest idea what they're talking about or why you would want to. <laughs> when we come back, can you explain what that is? Okay. Oh, talking with Arthur Clark. What is this about? What is a squared circle? It's a mathematical term, isn't it? Yes, it's, the, the idea is to make a square equal in area to a, to a given circle. And it cannot be done using just a compass and a ruler, the basic Euclidean construction. There are many ways of doing it with more complicated uh, mathematical tools, but it's been proved, it was proved in the last century, that you, cannot, you can never construct a square equal in area to a given circle just with a compass and a ruler. You can get it as close as you like, but you can never get it exactly the same. Well, I, I don't understand what the barrier is you run up against. Well, what, it's, what one of these, it's one of these fundamental things. Uh, you can't go into it with... You, it took 2,000 years to prove it couldn't be done, so I guess I can't do it in a few okay. minutes. <laughs> okay, but I will take your word that it can't be done. In other words, that's an absolute. We know yep. that no one will ever discover right. that. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the others? I mean, it's fun to know what the absolute limits of knowledge are in some areas. What are, what, uh, the speed of light. Oh, I know ah, something. Yes. You'd, I think you wrote a piece once called Einstein and God. Yes. Something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, had a lot of fascinating ideas. But one of them was the idea that the speed of light is an absolute limit in the universe. Nothing mm -hmm. can go faster than that by mm -hmm. definition. Mm -hmm. At yeah. least according to, the, uh, according to the theory of relativity, that no signal, no material object can ever travel faster than light. Mm -hmm. And that means that God can't control his own universe if he's reduced, if he's... Now, wait a minute, that's an enormous reducing. step. Why can't, what, what is that? Well, if God himself can never influence anything further uh, at uh, great... He can only control a very small area of the universe. If, anything several light years away, it would take him several years to influence that, if he obeys his own laws. You see, there's a kind of cosmological, astro-theological oh, paradox here. Either, either uh, you, God doesn't obey his own speed limits, mm -hmm. or if he does, he can't control the whole universe. Well, that's wonderful. I don't take this as a very serious objection, uh, but uh, there's a no. possibility that, uh, in fact, that we may be able to go faster than light. This is another possibility. So that would, you could would solve the get problem. around it that way, yeah. too. But that if, if God is off dealing with some problem at one end of the universe, right. and, and, so and all hell is breaking loose here, somewhere else, <laughs> it would take him the... millions of years to hear, even get the information, let alone be able to do. Assuming that he obeys his own laws, otherwise you have a God who doesn't obey his own laws. And this may be why we're in trouble. You see, he's coming here as fast as he can, but he may not make it in time. <laughs> <laughs> have you talked to, to ministers about this? Oh yes, and yes, them and them the, the, they're rather amused with the idea because yeah. I don't take it seriously, but it's an interesting speculation. It's, just, it's a sort of joke. I mean, you, there's no reason to assume that God would have laws, would have to obey the same laws that people do. Well, it, uh, this again is a theology, you know, the problem of evil and yeah. of good and evil, and you know, what laws does God obey? Well, I heard an argument one time between two, between a philosopher and a, and a theologian uh, and a minister type uh, on the idea that God was limited by time. In other words, he may know what's going to happen in the future, but he has to wait for me to do it because I'm in time, whether he is or not. And he has to wait for me until it happens. He may, I mean, it may be like a piece of film that he right. can look at and see the ending of. Um, it but, takes a uh, certain but, rate to run through the camera. He can't experience it or see it happen until we, who are in time, have it happen. But that's very, that's a little strange. I don't like getting involved in philosophy. It's too much yeah. like hard work. <laughs> yeah, so I stick to practical physics and uh, hardware. <laughs> you had a nice idea one time about a vacation in a vacuum. Well, the people will be going into vacuum, you know, and uh, or into space stations when the uh, space shuttle, you know, the DC-3 of space, anyone will be able to fly up to space in a, in a few, in 10 years' time. Those of us here now will we'll, oh, yes. we'll all be in space if we want to someday? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Is that right? And, you know, it's a strange thought. It's exactly three years now, isn't it, since the first landing on the moon. It seems a, a lifetime in other ways, and uh, only uh, a yeah. short moment in others. That's right, it does seem like only yesterday, and yet it seemed like and three the, years since yeah. we saw those men dancing on the moon yes. the first time. And it's, a, it's a sad in some way that the very last mm -hmm. Apollo flight is coming up in December, and that's the end of the line, you know, the Apollo 17. There are no more plans to go to the moon. Are you sort of sad about that? Or? I'm sad in, in, in some ways because it's a tremendous experience, a tremendous thing. I hope to see the last Apollo flight. In fact, I hope you may see it with me. A group of us are going to take the Queen Elizabeth probably, and go down and observe the last flight, which would be a night launch. Uh, we're going to go down on... A night launch? Yes, this is the first night launch. Oh, I didn't know that. And it'll be spectacular. It'll light up the whole of Florida. So we're going to take either the Queen or the Rotterdam, or probably both, a number of people are interested, and anchor off Cocoa Beach and observe this. It'll be a grandstand view of the rocket going up over the, you know, the water, reflection over the water, mm -hmm. the whole of Florida lit up. 
Then we're going to cruise for about two weeks following the mission and uh, I'd like you to come aboard and do a show from, we can do a show from the ship. We're going to have a ground station on the ship, <laughs> a satellite ground station, follow the mission. Who, who, who would my guests be? Anyone you want to. We'd have astronauts, cosmonauts. I heard David Frost was going along. David Frost, Hugh, da Hugh Downs, Walter Cronkite, you name them, we'll cover them all. I have them all. That's, that's know, interesting. Who we, who we don't like, we'll, we'll walk the, they'll walk the plank, you know. <laughs> we hope to go to the big uh, thousand foot radio telescope at Arecibo, you know, in Puerto Rico, this enormous radio telescope, mm -hmm. which it, m may one day make contact with other beings. It's one of the most spectacular pieces of scientific instrumentation in the world, a thousand foot dish. I didn't mean to hush you. What about that contact with other beings? Some in very recent years, there was the idea that radio messages were being gotten from outer space or something that could be interpreted as radio messages. What's the latest on that? Well, uh, that was the discovery of the uh, pulsars, these very rhythmic, rapid pulses, an extraordinarily precise frequency, which mm -hmm. a few years ago, one would have said the only thing that could have produced them would be uh, intelligent life. But we now are pretty sure they're produced by most extraordinary small stars neutron stars spinning at a very rapid rate and a very precise rate, which for some reason, just every time they spin around, they punch out a radio signal, rather like a lighthouse. Uh. And we're fairly certain that that's what they are, that they're a natural phenomenon. Uh, on the other hand, maybe they, they could be beacons. Uh, some of them might still be artificial. I think I made this joke before saying that I really know what they are. They're all beacons saying the same thing, which is essentially last stop for gas this side of Andromeda. <laughs> and astronomer's jokes have a, a nature of all to themselves. Oh. <laughs> do you, say, do you take any stock in this Bermuda Triangle idea? Uh, I, I intrigued a lot of viewers. I guess I was the, one of the first people to bring that to television. But the, the, briefly, that place in the, in the um, sea down in the Caribbean where well, planes, ships, and other things have disappeared over I, the years at an alarming, an alarming I, rate. I've heard a lot about this. Um, don't tell Cunard this, but we may take the Queen Elizabeth through the Bermuda Triangle and see what happens. Well, <laughs> would you rather not talk about that now? Then? They don't know this. <laughs> but not everybody. I don't, has I don't gone believe it. I, I don't, you I don't, don't believe, believe in it. No, I think it's yeah. uh, it's just ridiculous. But you do know that strange story down in Pensacola of the five planes that went out and said yeah. we are confused and disappeared without a trace, and then a PBY flew out after them and it disappeared and and all of that. But when you follow these things up, they usually evaporate. It turns out that it just isn't, isn't true. Yeah, it usually turns out there were no planes and there exactly, was no yeah. base there, except there was, someone sent me a clipping from a Florida paper after that where they were dedicating a plaque with the names of the dead men and all on it. Uh, well, they may easily have disappeared. I mean, uh, planes can, in fog or strange, uh, you know, atmospheric conditions, this sort of thing can happen, but it has mm -hmm. happened many times. So you don't believe in areas of the Earth with strange time no. warps or magnetic I may write about it, but I don't believe in it. You'd make it up, but you wouldn't necessarily believe in it.